On this episode of System Integrators Weekly, we're going to take a look at some Team Red systems over at Stintsbuilt, talk about the SkyTech thing that happened, take a look at Digital Storm, and check out the absolute artwork over at Falcon Northwest. All that and more on this episode of SI Weekly. Let's go, nerds! Hello, everyone. I'm Brea Thorne. Welcome to SI Weekly, the show that I make whenever I'm not busy flying around in arguably the coolest looking ship in the entirety of Starfield. Um, come at me, bro. It is the best. Now, if you're looking for a video where I go over a system for every single budget out there, that was last week's video, and you can watch that one as well. That's usually something we do like once a month. At least that's what I'm bringing back. But uh, this time we're doing a little bit more in-depth on just a couple of SIs. Now, what, what we're going to be looking at first is going to be stints built. We're going to take a look at a couple of systems there where they're using uh, AMD Radeon GPUs, which is something that I actually mentioned in that last video when I talked about stints built. Like, hey, where are those? They'd be a great option here. Uh, and he was like, hey, well, I've got them here. Check it out. So we'll take a look at those. And then got to talk about the thing that happened with the stream that was on Friday uh, with uh, with SkyTech. I've done a, f a few SkyTech reviews, but this system back here, the uh, the Prism 3, well, it was overall a good review, but then I ran into, well, I've, I've encountered an issue that was um, a bit of a big one for me. And we'll go over that in that chapter. By the way, yes, chapters. We do have chapters, and you can uh, check those out in the description and skip to whichever part interests you the most. But we will take a look at the lineup of uh, Prison 3 systems that are there at SkyTech. And then we're gonna go on over to Digital Storm. I haven't talked about them in a long time. We're gonna see if anything has changed and if it's any better than it was. I wasn't a huge fan when I looked at it a long time ago. And finally, after all of that, we're gonna be taking a look at Falcon Northwest. There is a reason we're covering Falcon Northwest in this video, and it's something that's gonna be coming up later this week. It's kind of, kind of something something really fun that uh, I'm working on with them. And uh, I am recording this on a Falcon Northwest Talon right now, and it's an awesome PC. So we're gonna see what those are like. They are very premium. So if you're in the higher end of, of a higher budget range and you want something pretty rock solid, I mean, you, want, you might want to stick around for that chapter for sure. But before we can get to any of those chapters, I do need to let you know that this video is sponsored by VIP CDK Deals. The best place to go when you want to get yourself an OEM Windows license to get rid of that annoying watermark and unlock all the customization Windows has to offer. So instead of paying well over $100 for a retail version of Windows, you can get an OEM key for a fraction of the price. Plus, you can use my code BRAY25 to get a nice fat discount off of the already discounted price. Keep in mind that this is an OEM key that gets attached to this system and cannot be used with another one or if you change your hardware. Make sure you get the right key for your operating system. For more information on how to use CDK deals, click the link in the description saying here's how it works and I'll walk you through the whole thing. Thank you CDK deals for continuing to support the channel. So before we get into anything else, let's go over a few very important disclaimers. Uh, this video is being filmed on uh, October 15th, 2023. Any pricing and availability that you see in this video is very likely to change if you're watching this weeks or months later. No big deal. You can always just check my channel for the latest content because this is what I do. Secondly, well, these are opinions that you're hearing. Uh, I'm going to be sharing my opinions and some of them you might not agree with. Very likely you're not going to agree with all of them. Uh, and if that's the case, no problem. Just feel free to uh, share your opinion, your dissenting opinion in the uh, comments down below. Please do so politely or go and discuss in the Discord, which um, the link for that is in the description as well. Final one, though, is this is not financial advice. I'm not here telling you you should buy this. In fact, I've been doing my best to move completely away from telling people what to buy because I don't want to be an influencer. I want to be an educator. I want to help you figure this stuff out for yourself so that you can make an educated decision, an informed purchase, so you feel confident when you do it. First, we're going to take a look at Stints Built. And I did, uh, after last, the last episode where I talked about them, and I said, hey, you guys should get the 7800 XT in there. That thing's supposed to be a really good value, you know, and 1440p gaming, yeah, yeah, all day long. And he was like, yeah, we did. Check the ready to ship systems. So that's what we're going to do. And check those out. Uh, if this 
is something that they tested and that they liked, maybe they'll integrate it into one of their uh, signature systems. That'd be cool. Let's go take a look. So here we are at stintsbuilt.com and uh, we're going to go over to quick ship PCs and you have two options here, ready to ship deals or uh, signature systems that ship within around seven days. Now, if you do look in the uh, signature systems here, you'll notice that there's a core one that doesn't have a GPU. And then you have all our, uh, you know, Nvidia graphics cards and everything else, right? That's where I was saying like, hey, you know what? The core elite, that thing could definitely go for like a 7800 XT to, to, to compete with that 4070 Ti. It would probably come in at a lower price. Well, guess what? It did. Here's a system right here. Now it is this right here. If you don't like RGB, this might be the system for you. This is a slipstream with a 7800X3D and a 7800XT. Like that's gonna be a potent combination. Uh, let's take, well, before we go into that one, there is this system for 999. That is an Ryzen 5 5600X and an RX 7600. And the RX 7600, is a pretty rad little GPU. If, if you're looking in the range of like, say an, in, uh, an Intel Arc A770 or A750, uh, or you're looking at like the 4060, this thing, this thing beats some, keeps up with others. It's right there in the running and it's a really solid uh, price to performance GPU for sure for 1080p gaming. If you're looking for 1440p though, I would say definitely take a look at the slipstream here. And this one's 1849. Right, except that you can use code Brayathorn to get a discount on that. Ah, huh? there you go. And this one comes in with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. If you're just looking at gaming, this is the optimal CPU for you. If you're looking at gaming at any resolution, this comes with a deep cool AK620, a large tower cooler right here, which is totally adequate to the task because the 7800X 3D is not a fire breathing monster. It instead, instead of using really high frequencies and tons of power to get you a lot of frame, high frame rates, it instead utilizes 3D V cache and lots of cache. This has the MSI MAG or MAG B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi uh, motherboard. So that's not a you know, budget bottom of the bin motherboard there. That's a good mid-range, lower mid-range motherboard. It's gonna have some decent IO, good power delivery with decent VRM cooling, all that stuff, all the things you want several M.2 slots so you can add more storage because this does come with a one terabyte drive. You have 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws S5. Uh, that's DDR5 6000 CL30. So that's high frequency, low latency, and it's also the sweet spot for Ryzen 7000 series, depending on the AGISA that's on the motherboard. Jeff, maybe you can let me know which, whether you've upgraded those, updated that AGISA or not, because if that's the case, 6400 is a new sweet spot. Then you got the RX 7800 XT, 16 gigs of VRAM, great 1440p performance, great pricing. This thing has had a really strong reception when it, when it, when it, uh, when it launched. And uh, yes, there's always gonna be a few little hiccups with drivers and all that whenever AMD cards just come out, but they're usually on top of it pretty quick and it's 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 killing it, man. It's a, it's a good GPU. And combined with a Ryzen CPU, you're gonna get things like smart access memory, which is basically resizable bar, but you're gonna get smart access memory, eventually smart access video, though I wouldn't recommend the 7800X 3D for video editing. It can do it and the 7800X T has AV1 encoding. So for YouTube streaming, ready to go. And once Twitch finally enables AV1 encoding uh, to be uploaded to them, then you can use it for that too. And then you have it in the Montec Air 903 base ATX mid tower case. That's why it's not, it doesn't come with RGB fans, but if you're looking for a blackout build, this thing is classy AF. Look at this thing. That's mostly what I wanted to cover over at Stints Built. Go ahead and check that out. Link in the description below and use code Brayathorn if you pick it up or any other system out of Stinsmilt's lineup. If none of the signature systems or the quick ship systems uh, tickle your fancy, you can just click right here on System Builder and start the process yourself to pick out your own parts or just go to Custom Builds and fill out the, uh, the build request form and get whatever you want. Now it's time to talk about what happened uh, last Friday with the stream where I unboxed and tested the Skytech Prism 3. 
I was really excited for this system because my first review of a SkyTech system was the Prism 2. It felt like sort of coming full circle. And I, there were a lot of things I really liked about it. The case was awesome. Um, the, this, the, it's the first case I've really gotten to see from GameDS, GameDS, GameDS. And I have to say, I know that they're known for being on the on the budget side of things, but I was very impressed, even though it was pretty derivative of a certain popular case out there. Still, it had its own flair, its own style, its own non-rectangular shape. It was pretty cool. And of course, temps were good. Just there were a couple issues I had with the system. The system in question was this one here. So it came with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D the most expensive, highest end CPU you can buy from AMD right now. And a 360 millimeter AIO, we'll get to that. Uh, 10 fans in the system, an X670 uh, DDR5 motherboard, of course, all DDR5 for uh, Ryzen 7, not X670E, X670. With this platform, with this generation, there, was, there, were, there were several different chipsets. There's X670 Extreme and then standard X670. The difference is X670 has its chipset, X670 Extreme has two of those, and it basically puts that together. Uh, still, still in the higher end of uh, motherboards for, it's a higher end chipset for Ryzen 7000 series. And a, a, an RTX 4080, uh, a 1000 watt 80 plus gold ATX 3.0 power supply, so it had the native 12VH PWR connector for the RTX 4080. The two parts I haven't mentioned yet are the parts I had a problem with. The 32 gigs of DDR5 are at 5,200 mega transfers per second. That's nowhere near the sweet spot for Ryzen. And anybody who knows Ryzen knows that it is very sensitive to RAM frequency. That was that was one part of it. The other side of it was the one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive. A one terabyte boot drive in a $3,370 system is a joke. It's It's... It's a, sh it's a joke. It's a waste of a one terabyte drive. That should be going in a system under two, under two grand. At this price point, putting a one terabyte in there, you're committing your customer to having to upgrade within six or seven months if they download games. Download five games, you're done, you're out of space. That's it. I've been saying this. I've been saying this for a while now. When you look at the price, the 7950X 3D is around $700 just for the CPU. The RTX 4080, around $1,300 for the GPU. Okay. And then you're talking about the rest of the system, 10 fans in the case. The case is not on the cheap side, considering that it is probably the nicest case that GamDS makes now. 1000 watt power supply, ATX 3.0, all those things. Yes. All right. I get that. Raise the price 20 bucks and you have a two terabyte drive in there. I would rather see that charge a little bit more and make it livable for longer. So I was like, okay, other than that system's good, everything's good. And, and whoa, this is a really cool looking AIO. And it was, it was a really neat looking AIO from Inwin that I'd never seen before. I want to talk really quick about the, um, the fan layout here. Okay. The way that this is set up, this is a dual chamber case here. And generally I recommend having these side fans here be intake. Skytech always, always sets them as exhaust. Well, guess what? It was a problem this time because a very, very fancy in-win, all-in-one liquid cooler happens to have an inline pump, meaning that the pump is not in the CPU block. It's not in the radiator. It is like in the be quiet, all-in-one liquid coolers. It's in line here. Now, what happens when you take this radiator and you turn it to put it on the side mounting point there. Well, guess what? That pump is right at the top of the loop. I was livid. I, I was like, I was like, I, I can't believe. I know the people there at Skytech. I haven't met, I haven't met many of the builders, but I've met the team there. They know you never, you never put the pump at the top of a loop, whether it's a custom loop or whether it's an all in one liquid cooler. Despite the efforts of AIO manufacturers to get as little air in the loop as possible, they try to make it just all fluid if they can, it's impossible to do that. There will be a little bit, there'll be little air bubbles. If you have the pump at the top of the loop, this is why you don't put the radiator on the bottom of the, of, of the case. If you have the pump at the top of the loop, then 
you can get air bubbles in the pump. What is it that lubricates the fans and the motor and the, basically everything in the pump is the liquid that's in the AIO. If there's air bubbles right there, it's going to wear down that pump in a fraction of the time it would normally take. Steve over Gamers Nexus, they did a whole couple of videos about this. They covered this in depth. I feel like maybe they used this AIO because it's one that they got a few of. They thought it looked cool and they threw it in there. I don't know if it's one that they have a lot of, but Skytech, I'm telling you this before the full review comes out, okay? Uh, the stream already happened and everything. And guys, you can go check that stream out right here if you wanna go watch it. You cannot use this AIO with the way that you insist on using exhaust fans on the side radiator with your with any dual chamber case. That radiator needs to be in the top and you know, those and exhausting through it. You need to have it that way. And you know what? While you're at it, set the side fans as intake. See what happens. Yeah, I'll say this. Any of you guys who want to buy the Prism 3, and there are multiple versions of it, not just the one that I got. There are versions that are not 3370. There are versions that are cheaper than that. Uh, very similar, still the one terabyte. Still, uh, it's a little bit more sensible here, I guess. Here you have the one with the 13900K and the 4080 for 2789. That's uh, that's very good. If you purchase it, you might want to request that they not use the Inwin AIO. Now, it's time for us to take a look at uh, a company we have not looked at for a long time, Digital Storm. I, uh, I sort of wrote Digital Storm off for a while after it was like mid 2021 and they were still using M.2 drives, but they were SATA M.2, meaning they still got like 500 megabyte per second read and write speeds, like a SATA drive, but it was in an M.2 like form, but they were passing them off as a performance series like a year and a half ago. It was ridiculous. So let's take a look at their desktops. And um, so before we've looked at the links, because that's kind of the most affordable one, they do, I think the Velox here is new with a sort of high airflow front panel. Um, Digital Storm does odd things sometimes with airflow, like ignoring it, which is odd. It never outdated. <laughs> I just, I just, it, it's never outdated next to a picture of two GPUs with SLI or NVLink going on there. That's awesome. Oh, bless your heart, Digital Storm. So here's what we're looking at. Their good system, as they consider it here, is an RTX 3050 and a Core i5-12400F. Not bad. This is pretty good actually right here, but 16 gigs of DDR5 that's not something you hear very often. More info. Thank you for the more info. What is this? You don't put the words more info in red. No, I don't want special offers. You don't put the words more info in red letters and give no info. How the cheek, the, the cheek to do something like that. Oh, wait, hold on. No, it's not everywhere. You do have it here. You need to let people know if this is dual channel or not, Digital Storm. Okay, look, look at this. They did, they do specify it now. My thing before was like, it just says performance series and you had to click more info. And that was where it said that the interface right here where it says interface was SATA. And I was like, yo, what? Also their performance series, performance series, right? Like the way Apple says everything is pro, to denote their most expensive stuff is th PCIe 3.0. How's that the performance series? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I like, I don't want to be the type to completely write off an entire SI. Like that's, that's drastic. I've done it. Uh, but over something like that, I don't know. Uh, let's look at their new Velox systems, even though they're starting at two grand. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a definitely a cool looking case. They don't come like this for two grand though. You don't get that. Let's see what it comes with for two grand. 13700 KF paired with a 4060. You might be building in a little bottleneck for yourself there. I mean, it's DDR5. It's at two grand. So as much as I'd like to see two terabytes at two grand for the boot drive, I know I'm not gonna see that here. 
but seriously, guys, really? Your ultimate for $4,374 comes with a one terabyte. Now you can customize it. You can customize it. But for this much money, you need to have a minimum spec that makes sense, guys. Let people downgrade if they want, but this should be two terabytes. This should be two terabytes. This should probably be two terabytes. Let's see what this $4,374 system comes with for the memory frequency. I'm curious. So your cheapest memory, so people, if they want to have the optimum, but yeah, this is the baseline memory. Cool, cool. I do like their choice of memory. They're using Kingston Fury. That's awesome stuff. This thing should be like already having your premium memory in it for this price. And you get the, the basic, a PCIe 3.0, one terabyte drive. If you want to get something from Digital Storm, how about we go to other more different Digital Storm where you can actually get a good deal. Build Redux. But Build Redux is a totally different animal, completely different. Um, you They only use one case, and that is uh, the Cooler Master TD500 mesh. And um, you can get some pretty good deals from them. You really can. But it's really simple. You you go in, you pick a couple of games, Apex, uh, Cyberpunk, there we go. Very, very widespread there. And you pick whether you want good, better, best, or ultimate. Let's go with better. And you pick your screen resolution, 1440p. So what do we get if we go with better? Well, it's a 12400F, okay. 16 gig DDR4 dual channel. Look at this, look at this. They can do it. They can say dual channel. You guys can't do it in Digital Storm? You get the Hyper 2 12 cooler, Cooler Master TD500 mesh, RGB, a B760 motherboard, and uh, let's see, a 4070. Okay, so what you're looking, that's why whenever we said that we want to do 1440p, that's probably what made it switch over to the 4070. And you still get a one terabyte NVMe M.2 and uh, the fans that come with the case pretty much, and a 750 watt ATX 80 plus gold power supply with AX Wi Fi. Okay. But then you can go over here, you can either pick through there, like let's see what the best does. If you go with best, 12700F, still 16 gigs, and but this upgrades you to an all-in-one liquid cooler. It's still 12th gen, you know, 14th gen also is coming out and still a one terabyte is not best, not really best, but the price here for best, uh, you do go up hundred watts in the power supply as well. And, and they are keeping within the minimums that uh, or above the minimums that NVIDIA recommends power supply wise. Uh, but your price for that is $2,500. At least they show you what the price is. Yeah, we couldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't recommend spending more than $39 on the entirety of your system memory. Uh, but you can change that. You can customize it. Go here, click customize, and you, you can fix this ridiculousness to go with 32 gigs. There you go. And if you want to upgrade anything else, like let's see if the power supplies denote anything with ATX 3.0, nothing. Thank you for including this information. But I recommend you guys source some ATX 3.0 power supplies to make building simpler, to make to, to sort of make that process go smoother, and to help with things like like RMAs and troubleshooting. Okay, you do have the 7800X 3D for 60 bucks more though. Yo, let's do that. But it's going to change the motherboard. It put it back to 16 gigs, but it says dual channel. See, Digital Storm, it's two words. You can do it. I believe in you. This up the price to twenty six twenty nine. However, you got a forty eighty and a seventy eight hundred X three D for twenty six twenty nine. That's a heck of a deal right there. Two years warranty, I believe parts and labor, but don't quote me on that. Build Redux still a good deal, I think. I, I think you still get a solid deal from Build Redux. Uh, really, just tinker with this. Like, what, you want storage? You want to get two terabytes? Let's do that. Two terabytes of storage, uh, sixty bucks more. There you go. Anyway, that's build. That's Build Redux. I don't have a code with them or anything, um, but yeah. I think that between Digital Storm and Build Redux, I th to my mind, the only thing Digital Storm has ever done right is Build Redux. Sorry, Digital Storm. I've never had a good time looking at your stuff. Now, when I say you don't need to be competitive on price, you, sh you need to be competitive on performance, have an up-to-date system, something good, something that people can rely on and that'll be fast and that'll be good. L the, the price itself will sort, it, so will sort out the right buyer for you. It's a really weird way of saying this, but when it comes down to it, as a buyer, you need to know what you prioritize, okay? 
if you prioritize if if you prioritize performance over price, like you're trying to get the most perform squeeze the most performance you can out of every penny you got, like that is a certain type of system integrator. Okay. That's that's why they have such an important place in the industry. Companies like I buy power. Skytech does kind of that stuff too, though they do some things different from I buy power. You just choose between the between the two or a, a, any other SI that's like the large scale ones that sell at higher volumes, and you find the one that that suits you best. But when you get to a certain threshold where you're like, I've been saving for a long time, or you know what, this is my end game PC. I want to get the end game PC. This is the one. This is the one that's going to last me for years. Let's talk about an SI that will spare no expense to be on the absolute bleeding edge. This is Falcon Northwest. And Falcon Northwest, I've talked about before, I've opened one of their PCs and I've been using one of their PCs for nearly a year now. Not nearly, like that, that 10 months now. It is the best PC I've ever owned. Bar none. And I'm including that in PCs among PCs I've built. Falcon Northwest is the original gaming PC. Now, I will go into the history of Falcon Northwest a little bit more, and trust me, it's a really cool story. A little bit more when I in the video that's coming out later this week, because I'm doing something very special with Falcon Northwest, and they sent me a little goodie here. Uh, they and Intel did so. But I don't want that to overshadow the conversation about Falcon Northwest. Because Falcon Northwest, for about 30 years now, has been at the peak, at the cutting edge. This GPU right here, the Pro Art 4080, they helped develop that with Nvidia to get a two slot 4080 for the Tiki, which is amazing, by the way. Look at any Robitech video. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna link a Robitech video right here where he's talking about the Tiki. Falcon Northwest is at the peak. And if you want to be able to say to yourself, like I have the peak of performance, you have to understand that's going to be expensive. They design, Kelt Reeves designs all the cases that Falcon Northwest uses. And you can only use Falcon Northwest cases with their builds and you cannot buy them for DIY builds, which makes me sad. I would love to build my own frag box. I would love that. Man, look at the Tiki, the Tiki's insane. I want to give a warning. For those of you who watch my videos, which by the way, thanks for watching the videos. Uh, so that they can comment, that's way too expensive. You can buy it cheaper somewhere else, or I can build it for less. Those two things are completely obvious. And I'm warning you right now, you are going to be foaming at the mouth. But I promise you, you cannot build it like this. You just can't. I have to be careful talking about Falcon Northwest because I, very young me, was uh, dreaming of having a Falcon Northwest PC way back in the day. And that part of me never died. It's there. But I can still look at this objectively. And as a matter of fact, I'm one of the only people, I watched other Falcon Northwest reviews. I'm one of the only people who's ever criticized their cable management. <laughs> uh, and, and that's, and I had people from, uh, you know, I had owners of other system integrators in the chat being like, you're crazy. What? Yeah, I don't like the cable management because it's not very user serviceable. But that's not the point of Falcon Northwest. The point is they take care of it. You have a great warranty overall, but the first year of that warranty, if there's a problem in the first year, they're like, no, that's us, 100%, we got this. They pay to have it overnighted to them and they will overnight it back to you, all on their dime, done. No questions asked, it's done. So what we're gonna be looking at is the PC that I have, the Talon, to sort of prep for the video that's coming later this week. Okay, so we're gonna go here to Menu. And if you wanna learn about Falcon, learn about them, look at their gallery, which we're taking a peek at the gallery, by the way. Uh, look at their desktops, laptops, and support is right there. I think they cycled, oh, nope, nope. Oh, by the way, there. if you wanna see a nice example of some UV printing, yeah, how about this one? <laughs> Yeah, that's the, that's the initial system they sent me. And we kept the UV printing for uh, for the, the one that they sent afterwards, but this was the giveaway PC right here. I mean, look at that. Look at that precision. Let's get to the configuration thing, which is right here at the top. Configure Talon. 
Now, to be clear, <laughs> these start at uh, just under $4,000 starting. But you know what you're not gonna get at around that price? A one terabyte PCIe Gen 3 drive, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. A lot of the things that are here in the beginning, most SIs will put at the end of it. So they, they show you, because a lot of people I think will just go for the components and then skip some of the really cool customization stuff that they can do. So right here, you have stuff like uh, custom UV printing. You can change the chassis logo insert right here. You can go for glass side panels or solid aluminum. And then you can have what I have, which is glass side panel on one side and solid aluminum on the other side. So right here, look at this, ATX 3.0 or PCIe 5.0, all of their power supplies, all of them, and only ASUS motherboards. That's it. Uh, this is the one they sent me with mine, the Z790 Hero, clearly expensive motherboard, but they don't put in a cheaper motherboard here. They have the Z790-F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, lots of IO on that thing, great motherboard. Or you can go up to the E, which has more of those things. And then there's the Z790 Hero. Processor, it's starting with a 13600K. You know what you don't see in these, on any of these processors? The F. They got the F out of there. So if you're gonna edit video on this thing, like I do, you're gonna be able to use QuickSync, which helps with video editing. Goes from the 13600K up to the 13900KS, and they're going to be upgrading that to 14th gen. And uh, the cooler is their uh, Falcon Northwest liquid cooling, 280 millimeter AIO. For memory, it is all Kingston, all Kingston memory. And from what I understand, they tested several different brands of memory. Kingston was the most stable. The testing that these guys do is ridiculous. The charts, the info that Kelt has sent me, thorough, unfiltered, just full on helpful information, thorough testing, starting at 6,000 mega transfers per second here. Now, the thing about it is, this thing's starting at around $4,000 and it starts with a 4060. You might be like, whoa, 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 Bray, you said that they did. No, listen. If someone's coming in and they want to have like the best system they can get, but they already have a really good GPU, you get something like with the 40, 4060, maybe even ask them to send you one without it, but I don't know that they do that. So this is an option here. But considering the overall price, for one thing, you have to understand a lot of that price, that case is not cheap to produce. If they sold it, it would be, well, think of the most expensive case that you might buy, double that, okay? But also in the grand scheme of things, going up to something like a 4080 or 4090, you can, ex if you wanna get like really crazy performance, expect to be at $5,000 or higher basically, okay? Now you can also get the 7900 XTX rather than the 4080 and save yourself 256 bucks. Um, you, well, you also have the professional cards here, okay? Like the A6000 or the 6080 ADA, which is the newest one. Those are very, very expensive. And yeah, you're not getting one of those because you're not doing a workstation, are you? So if you're going with like a 4080, 4697 with a 32 gigs of RAM and a 13600K, there you go. But if you are going for end game and you want something like a 13900K or say maybe the 14700K that's upcoming, that's gonna be a, an up, it's gonna be pretty much the most significant update for this gen, for the 14th gen is gonna be this i7. So 4908 with a 4080 and the 13700K might be a little bit more for the 14700K, okay? So yeah, there you go. You got, you have yourself a Falcon Northwest system, done. Let's go back and take a look at the AMD systems. All right, so 7600X, what if we go with a 7800X 3D? It's 128 bucks more. Yeah, between the 7600X and the 7800X 3D, if you're getting it, if you're doing a gaming PC, 7800X 3D is the one, get that. Uh, similar cooler, similar RAM, 6,000 mega transfers per second, which is depending on the AGISA on the motherboard, the sweet spot. And if it's the newer one, let me see if there's 6400. There's no 6400 here. Kelt, you know about the new AGISA, you know the new sweet spot for Ryzen. Where is that 6400? So here, 7900 XTX, done, boom, look at that. 4641 and you have a peak AMD system, all AMD, all the time, there you go. You wanna go lower by 550 bucks? 7900 XT, 1440p gaming all day long. There you go. There's something you gotta understand. When I, I talk to a lot of people from system integrators, whether they're the owner of a smaller SI or they're reps from larger ones, none of them, not one 
has ever had a negative thing to say about Falcon Northwest. That is like unprecedented. You don't get that. That doesn't happen. That's someone they compete with. But Falcon Northwest has sort of, I mean, they, they've been the pioneers for the longest time. When I talked earlier, kind of to Digital Storm, about like wanting to be premium, staying on the bleeding edge, that is what Falcon Northwest does. I've said this before, I will say it again. Kelt Reeves is at the helm of that ship there. And he has probably forgotten more about PCs than I will ever know. That's the kind of person you want in charge of a company. I mean, again, he designs these cases that they use and it's running right now. I think my light is louder. The fan on my light is louder than this PC. As someone who reviews PCs, talks about PCs, I do sometimes struggle to when it comes to staying unbiased. Okay. And this is one of those cases for sure, which is why I try to stick to things that are just known quantities, right? Like Falcon Northwest has been around the longest. Uh, they are on the bleeding edge. They always have, they always stick to the newest stuff. Although that Ram frequency thing with uh, the 7,000 series Ryzen processors, that is a, a recent update. Kelt won't put that stuff out until it is thoroughly tested and a hundred percent so we're going to go more, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a video coming out later this week and we're going to have fun with it. Okay. Um, I, I still have some production to do on it and then editing. So we're going to try to get that out in a couple days and you'll see that soon, but it's going to be fun and I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope you are too. So get subscribed if you haven't already. I don't say that in every video, but I want you to see this one. It, just the thing, do the thing and the bell, maybe. I mean, I don't want to ask too much. Is that asking too much? Guys, That's that. I think that's going to be it for, for this one. I will keep you in suspense as to what's going on later this week, but it's only going to be a couple days, and I hope that, you, uh, I hope that you're excited for that. I certainly am, but uh, that'll be it for now. Until then, take care.